This tablet resource app is your essential guide to the Asus Transformer family. It brings together over 100 videos produced by VGJ Felix on everything to do with the Android tablet from hints and tips to the best apps to download. The app has several options along the bottom of the screen, the main one being a feed to the latest videos that have been uploaded. Videos are uploaded on a near daily basis and all you need to do is tap on the play button. This will automatically launch a YouTube app and play the video. Once you have finished watching your video, you can use the back button to return to the application. The next feature is the archive section, where videos are divided into useful categories, such as the best apps to download for the transformer and basics videos that provide a wealth of tips and tutorials. There's also a Facebook page about the videos as well as a Twitter feed and contact methods. This application works just as well on smartphones and the app will send notifications to your device when new videos are uploaded to the channel. Of course, this app is absolutely free and there are no adverts. For more information, visit any of the links at the end of this video. And thanks very much for watching. There are a thousand and one incarnations of Buster Move, Puzzle Bobble, Bubble Shoot or whatever it was originally called, but I have found this one made by Runner Games to be the most competent. If you've never played it before, here are the very basics. You fire a variety of different coloured bubbles from the bottom of the screen towards bubbles that are hanging from the top of the screen. If you connect three of the same colour together, they disappear as I am ably demonstrating here. The aim is to clear all the bubbles before they reach the bottom of the screen because after every seven bubbles you fire, the hanging bubbles are lowered from the top of the screen. Experience will teach you to clear routes to the bubbles towards the top of the screen and remove them which will cause all the ones hanging off it to disappear. Bubble Shoot is very easy to learn, very fun to play and this game has translated very well to touch screens as it allows you to fire bubbles with pinpoint accuracy. Now onto the reasons why I like this particular version of the game. First of all it's free which always helps but this version of the game has two modes. Puzzle mode which I showed you earlier and this arcade mode where the bubbles are always falling towards you. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of levels which you have to complete as best as possible in order to earn stars and unlock new levels. The best thing of all however is the music. Just listen to it, I absolutely love it and I can't stop humming this tune in my head. But, just in case you don't like the music, you can switch it off. <laughs> Bubble Shoot by Runner Games is definitely the definitive version and it works great on tablets. Zombie games tend to get an easy ride in the gaming world for some reason. They're always popular and Dead Trigger is no different. It's got so much press that I was intrigued enough to purchase it and find out what all the fuss is about. As you can see, it's a first person shooter in which you control your character using the left thumb to move and the right thumb to aim, shoot and reload. To be honest, the controls are a little tricky and first person shooters don't really lend themselves too well to the touch screen environment. But the mechanics are fairly solid and the graphics are quite remarkable, especially with the Tegra 3 enhanced effects. The Transformer tablet also separates itself from the crowd by having a USB port so you can plug a controller in. Now the game feels much more responsive and entertaining, but after all, shooting zombies has always been entertaining. Each level lasts for around 2 or 3 minutes and revolves around one of the following themes. Kill zombies, survive zombies, collect stuff to kill zombies, and protect stuff from zombies. And while we're at it, why don't we go hardcore and use a HDMI slot to effectively turn Dead Trigger into a proper console game? The only problem is it's too simple to be a console game and have any longevity. But on the other hand, this is a very cheap game. But on the other third hand, you'll have to do a lot of in-app purchasing, using real money to buy better weapons and progress in the game. This has irritated many gamers, including myself. So, in summary, this is a fun game, boosted by the Transformers technical abilities, but it's not an ideal tablet game. This app could very well revolutionise the way you navigate around your Android touchscreen device. It harmonises simplicity with a jolly good idea. Switch from one application to another from anywhere with one finger gesture. Now that is cool. The concept revolves around swiping your finger from off the screen into an active zone that triggers the application. You can completely customise this active zone, which is indicated here as a red border. Right now I am switching on more active zones which will mean that if I swipe in from that border 
swipe pad will activate and I can choose an application to switch to. So what I've done now is turn on active zones on the whole of the left and right of the screen. Now, when I draw my finger in from either side, swipe pad will offer me 12 apps or browser bookmarks to switch to. Now, of course, this setup is a little impractical as swipe pad would be firing off all the time and it would interfere with other apps such as Dolphin Browser. So I tend to leave the active zone to just one corner of the screen. But it works really well because you instinctively learn to go to that part of the screen when you want to switch to other applications. Setting up swipe pad is really intuitive too. You swipe to a box and let go while it's blue to launch the box or let it change orange and then let go to change the application or bookmark. For a few extra pennies you can buy more slots and extra features but crucially the base application is free and that makes swipe pad an essential addition to your tablet. While we continue to wait for Google themselves to construct a tablet app market environment which I'm starting to think will never happen we have to make do with third party offerings and the latest of these is the revamped Tablified Market app. In essence, Tablified Market is a database of tablet optimized Android apps. It offers a similar range of categories as Google Play, from news to widgets, sports to productivity. The idea behind the app is familiarity, so if you know how to use Google Play, you'll find Tablified an easy, intuitive experience. Once you've found an app that interests you, simply press the install button to launch you into Google Play, where you actually download the app. That does mean that Tablified is nothing more than a middleman, a conduit to the apps you're looking for. But it's reassuring to know that you are ending up in the safest and most secure environment for downloading Android apps. Now, Tablified is a vast improvement over its previous incarnation, but it does still suffer from some speed issues, and some of the buttons and text are far too small for a tablet app. You can pay for a pro version which lets you change some of these settings, but should we really have to pay for something that Google should have resolved over a year ago when tablet apps first came out? So in summary, it can't do you any harm to try Tablified and see if it can point you in the right direction. Battery Reborn is brilliant in its style, features and cool stuff. It's currently free as a beta app in the marketplace, so try it out for free while you can. The application itself consists of four main screens, the first being a large, simple but cool looking battery meter. The second screen displays interesting information about your battery such as the discharge rate, how long your battery is likely to last and how long it takes to recharge. The third screen, which I'll show you in a moment, controls the fantastic home screen functions. First of all you have a neat looking widget. But perhaps more impressive is the battery breakdown display that sits in your notifications tray. It displays key information and enables you to switch off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is a fantastic additional feature. As I've said, the options for this are controlled in the third screen of the application, while the fourth screen includes setup options to put your tablet into flight mode during the night time to save even more power. In summary, Battery Widget Reborn is the complete battery app package. I showed you in a previous video how to get Flash working on the Nexus 7, and this app called Flashify enhances the accessibility with an ingenious idea. Let's say that Chrome is your browser of choice, but you want to watch a Flash video that, as we know, Chrome doesn't support. You will need to use an alternative browser such as Firefox. Well, this app makes the transition seamless. Simply find the web page in your normal browser and then press the share option. Choose Flashify, which then gives you the option to choose an alternative browser that loads at the same web page, which will then let you play the Flash you want to use. In this example, I'm loading up Firefox, which then presents me with the option to play Flash and the video appears. The atmosphere in Lee Valley is absolutely electric. Tim Bailey and Etienne Stock looking for... This is one of those brilliant, simple apps that has no drawbacks and is completely free. Screen rotation is a bit of a grey area on the Nexus 7, so here are the basics. You can turn on screen rotation in most applications, such as web browsers, that will rotate in any direction. However, your home screens do not rotate from portrait mode and there is no out-of-the-box solution. Some apps will also ignore screen rotation and stay locked in portrait mode, such as the BBC app. 
As always though, there is a solution and it comes in the form of Ultimate Rotation Control, an application that overrides screen rotation defaults and puts them in your control. Once you enable the app, it forces the screen to rotate no matter what screen or application you are in. An icon in the notifications tray will appear when the app is active, so start rotating and see what happens. As you can see here, the home screen works great and it puts the Google search and icon dock in perfect places on opposite ends of the screen. The BBC app also rotates too, but be aware that this app is not rotating to its tablet optimised version, which would include articles and news stories on the same screen. There are a few options in the notifications tray that let you change the settings of ultimate rotation control to normal, forced or locked rotation. But as the app suggests, you can take ultimate control by selecting individually how each app behaves so that some rotate while others stay fixed. If you're willing to put the time in, you can customise to your heart's content, but switching to a forced mode for all apps is a good place to start. Ultimate Rotation Control is free as a 7 day trial and £1.69 after that, but if you're one of the early Nexus 7 adopters who got the Google Play credit, you should definitely spend a little bit of it on this. The on-screen keyboard of a Nexus 7 can cause a bit of a dilemma when typing. In portrait mode, the keys are spaced well enough for you to type with your left and right thumbs without too much discomfort. However, switching to landscape mode makes the keyboard far too big and you'll find your thumbs stretching and crisscrossing each other. So, what do you do? Well, a simple and free solution is to download an alternative typing application called Perfect Keyboard that does a really cool trick and I'll show you that in a minute. First of all, you need to set it up. When you've installed the app, you will need to activate it, so go to Settings and from there go on to Language and Input. Press Default and choose Perfect Keyboard. Now watch as I begin typing in portrait mode and then switch the screen to landscape mode. The keyboard actually splits itself in two so that the keys are centred around the sides of the screen where my thumbs can easily reach them. It looks odd but the keys retain their QWERTY keyboard structure and you tend to ignore the number pad in the middle so typing remains as intuitive as ever. Perfect Keyboard has a great level of flexibility and customization, so you can change the keyboard to all shapes and sizes. You do this by going to the Perfect Keyboard settings, choosing Layout and then editing the appropriate orientation. To add this Split Keyboard mode, all you need to do is select Landscape Layout and choose Split Keyboard. And that's it, your keyboard problems should be solved. While Google Play is a default content market provider preloaded onto your Nexus 7, there is nothing stopping you from going elsewhere to get applications. One such place is the Amazon App Store, which has recently been released in territories outside the US. To get this application, you will need to go to the Amazon website and search for the Amazon App Store. Remember that this app is coming from outside Google Play, so you might have to adjust your tablet settings to allow the application to install. See the appropriate video, which is in the description. The application itself is basically another app market, just like Google Play, albeit set out a little differently. The main page provides you with popular apps and all you need to do is press on one to find out more information and download the app. You will need to know that to download any apps and pay for apps, you will need an Amazon account. None of this is tied to your Google account. To be honest, the Amazon App Store isn't that good. There aren't that many apps available and the interface is a little slow and clunky. Google's own marketplace is much better. However, the Amazon App Store is essential for one reason and one reason alone, their free application of the day. Each day a paid app will be free, so it's worth getting the Amazon App Store just for that reason. So far I've got Angry Birds, Plants vs Zombies and Quell all for free. And it's not just games either. Occasionally you will find an office suite or productivity app being offered. It's money for nothing and apps for free or something like that. First things first, if you don't live in the UK, this app's probably not going to be much help to you. For those of you who are left, we are a frugal bunch of people and we like our bargains. UK Hot Deals is a huge shopping community where people come together to share great deals. The more popular it is, the hotter it gets. DealPad takes the website and converts it into an application perfectly. The left scroll column shows you all the hottest deals at the moment. 
The higher the temperature, the hotter the deal. Simply press on the deal to show more information in the main portion of the screen. There you will find a description of a product and comments from the Hot Deals community. If the deal is online, simply press on Go to Deal and it will load the web page up within the application. You can pinch to zoom here too, which is a really nice touch considering it's being squeezed into quite a small space. At the top of the screen, there is an option to drill down into categories such as computers, travel, fashion, home and so on. This, coupled with the speed at which you can navigate through different products, is the real strength of DealPad. It's one of those applications that makes web browsing redundant on tablets. It's so much better suited to the specific needs of a site than the site itself. When you do find a deal that takes your fancy, simply press on a star in the top right hand column and this will save it into a bookmark so you can return to the product easily later on. The app also includes a range of options that allow you to choose default categories, deals per page, whether or not to show expired deals and so on. And you can sort by deals, freebies or vouchers. In terms of filtering, which is the most important thing when you are trying to find a bargain, DealPad is flawless. And it works just as well in portrait mode as it does in landscape mode. The columns revert to a 50-50 sizing, so it's still easy to navigate the deals and the text is nice and simple to read in the right hand column, although you might have to do a little bit more scrolling in this mode. And of course, we can't forget that there is a text search available. While DealPad has been designed with a Nexus 7 in mind, it works great on smartphones too. The only real difference is that you can't see product descriptions until you actually press on a deal, and you can simply use the back button to return to the deal list. Larger 10-inch tablets prove to be no problem for DealPad either. The extra screen space simply allows you more luxury to navigate through screens the way you want to. The best deal of all, of course, is the app itself. It's free. And while there is a small advert in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you probably didn't even notice it until I just mentioned it. So, grab yourself this bargain and open up a world of cheap retail therapy. An early disclaimer on this one, if you don't live in the UK, this app is no good to you because you need a TV license and a UK internet service provider. TV catch up, oddly enough, isn't anything to do with catching up with your television. It's actually a live streaming service that brings together most of the channels available on digital television in the UK. Down the left hand column you can scroll through 50 plus channels available to watch. The neat thing here is that you can get channels such as Dave that are not available on Freesat, which is the only thing available in my area. Each channel will show you what's on now and what's on next, and all you need to do is press on a channel to kick it off. You will have to cross off an advert, but once you do, you're into the television channel, which buffers very quickly and streams in very high quality. He came out to meet him. There is a full screen mode as well, although the channel will need to rebuffer, but as you can see, it takes no more than two or three seconds. Now, as I've said, this is live streaming television, so there is no option to pause and you can't treat this application like iPlayer or similar applications that allow you to watch programs after they have been broadcast. This is all about the ability to watch live television through a simple and snappy application. As you can see here, I'm literally flicking through channels and the app and its streaming capacity copes very well. It's very reliable too and so far the connection has never dropped out, a fate that so many streaming sites suffer from. This app works just as well on smartphones as well, the only difference being that channel listings take up the whole screen and when you press on one you go into full screen to watch the actual channel. Of course if you're going to take this out and about you may have to accept some performance issues depending on your 3G coverage and the application might have some issues detecting whether or not you actually live in the UK or at least it did with me when I tried it but this is a very new app and there are bound to be improvements so stay tuned ah, get it stay tuned <laughs> forget any preconceived notions of cricket being a ball fest stick cricket ramps up the excitement tenfold making it a hack smack and bash affair that's perfect for quick tablet gameplay here are the basics, and this is all you need to know because it's a pretty basic game. You always bat and have two buttons, hit left and hit right. The key is to judge where the bowler is going to bowl and at what speed. 
then it's up to you to decide which direction to swing and when to time your shot. Hit the sweet spot and you'll be smacking boundaries and scoring runs quickly. However, mistime your shot by a fraction or misjudge your direction and you're out. This game is all about fast reactions and timing and it is insanely addictive. When you get the hang of it, you'll start smashing the ball to all parts of the stadium and it's incredibly satisfying when you time your shots perfectly. Cue montage. There are a variety of different game modes in stick cricket, my favourite being world domination, where you have to chase a progressively larger run total in 20 overs against progressively more difficult and varied bowling attack. Watch out for spinners later on who can literally spin the ball around your batter to hit the wicket. There's also the all-star slog mode where you pick a team and try and make as many runs as you can in 5, 10 or 20 overs. This is high score action where you're essentially playing against your previous best. Finally, there is the stick academy training mode where you can choose to play against a particular type of bowler and practice batting against them as the screen gives you additional timing and direction aids. Stick cricket is free with paid additionals to give you more teams in world domination mode and a world cup mode. My confession is that I enjoy playing stick cricket so much that I have actually bought some of the in-game features. And believe you me, voluntarily getting money out of the Yorkshire man is a rare, rare sight to behold. If that's not a ringing endorsement of stick cricket, then I don't know what is. Super Stickman Golf is another one of these fantastic games where you have to ignore its roots as a golf game and treat it as an instant, gratifying, fun mobile game. First up, there are loads of courses, each consisting of nine holes and varying wildly in difficulty, but they challenge you at an excellent learning curve. The controls, of course, are very simple. Press the left and right cursors in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen to change the angle of your shot. When you think you've lined up your shot correctly, press the go button and the meter will then rise and descend. Simply press it again when you think the power is right to take your shot. When the ball lands on the green, you just have to get the power of your shot right. Now, these are the very first levels of the game and they are very simple and you can shoot low scores quite easily, like this. Get in a hole! Yes! To spruce things up, you are given special powers that you can use to aid your round. These can range from ultra power shots to balls that stick to walls or turn water into ice so you're not penalised. I'll demonstrate here one of the superpowers as I miss my chip shot. Because I missed my shot, I want to take it again, so I'm going to use the mulligan ability to retake my shot. Back to the start I go, let's try again. And that time I am perfect. Of course, you have a limited number of times you can use these powers, so there's a nice touch of strategy to consider. As I said earlier, the complexity of the holes soon develops into fiendishly complicated levels that can be approached in different ways. If you go the safe route, you might score consistently. But if you want to set high scores and get the in-game achievements, you'll have to start taking chances and being very accurate with your shots, finding your way through tiny gaps. This is a game of angles, power selection, and careful use of your special abilities. All the ingredients of a wonderful and enthralling game. Within 15 minutes of playing this game, you simply get it, and it just keeps giving you more and more and more. Look at this hole, for example which is a par 8. It's massive, and it's just the tip of the iceberg of what the game has to offer. And, as usual, the 7-inch form factor of the Nexus 7 is perfectly suited to this game. Each round of golf takes 5 to 10 minutes, so it's the ideal distraction. In fact, I actually call it one of those guilty pleasures. You know you shouldn't, but you've got to do something while you're sat on the toilet. And obviously, to cap off another fantastic gaming application, Super Stickman Golf is free. Wonderful. I can summarise Major Mayhem in a single sentence. It's Time Crisis for touchscreens. The problem is, you probably haven't heard of Time Crisis, so allow me to explain. Major Mayhem is a cover and fire on the rail shooter. There's no sophistication to this. You shoot stuff, stuff shoots back at you. You kill or be killed kill everything and you advance, but get hit three times and you die. 
Your character will always start behind a piece of cover that protects you, but to shoot at enemies you have to tap on that part of the screen. However, the moment you do this, you come out of cover and you are now vulnerable. It's fast and frenetic with multiple enemies always taking pot shots at you. You will usually get a graphical indication that an enemy shot will hit you though, as a red circle will surround them, so that does give you a tiny bit of time to get back into cover. When you take your thumb off the screen you stop firing and drop back into cover. Occasionally white scientists will appear in the field. Make sure you don't shoot them because they will either replenish your energy, give you money or special abilities such as this matrix bullet time mode. Each of the classic mode levels lasts about 2-3 to three minutes so it's fantastic snack sized gaming. And yet again the 7 inch size of the Nexus is perfect. On a smartphone it's too small to shoot accurately at stuff. On larger tablets your thumbs can't reach the middle of the screen, but on the Nexus all the proportions are absolutely spot on. This game, like many games these days, encourages you to go for achievements, of which there are loads. Achievements give you extra currency, which allows you to buy new clothes, supplies and weapons uh, from the store. Along with the classic story mode that consists of 45 levels of action, there is also a time attack, survival and arcade mode. This is another incredible free game that's ideally suited to the Nexus 7. And of course, if you like this, you'll absolutely love Time Crisis. The only trouble is you'll need a PlayStation 1, a light gun and a copy of the game. You'd best get onto eBay for that. 3, 2, 1... Hi guys and welcome to another Nexus 7 video and I'm able, ably uh, assisted by another pair of thumbs today. Ugh, right, okay, this person here, you can bring back your thumb now, this person here is Jelly Juju who's going to show you how to play this song called, this game called Song Pop because I have no idea about music and I um, am not a very social person. So this game is Song Pop and it is absolutely free, a uh, popular Facebook game which has now um, transferred itself onto uh, Android devices and so Ju is now going to show you how to play it. So as you can see, uh, Ju, off you go, start navigating please. Just do some stuff. She's going to create a game, uh, she's going to choose a random person, and then she's, she's going to pick a playlist of music. And the idea is that uh, when this music is played, she has to try and select the music as quickly as possible. So Julia is going to go for love songs. Aww. And here are some songs. So good luck, Ju. Are you confident? No. No? Why not? It's because you're not very good. Do you know what it is? I have no idea. Very good. <laughs> it's obviously forgettable for me. So you have four choices. Um, Julia so far is two for two. Uh, she could remove two of the artists, a bit like um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Which we've just done there. Oh. Uh, she's still got it wrong. Uh, so she has got one incorrectly, uh, and as you can see, that's James Blunt, obviously, you know that one. Uh, as you can see here, but it's doing the timings, so she got that one right in three seconds. Um, she has no idea about this one, so she's going to have to guess at Peter Gabriel, which is correct. So she got four out of five, uh, which is pretty competitive score. Now, what will happen next, Julie, because I've got no idea. How does it work? You've just done that. Okay, you've been playing this Denise person. So now my, my opponent has these to beat. If I get one wrong and she gets it right, she's won. But if my times are quicker than hers, she's won. So if she gets five out of five right, she wins. If she gets four out of five right, it's determined on speed of time. Pretty much. All right, okay. Right, so that was you challenging someone else. Now, there could be an example where someone challenges you and then you get to play a game. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Like all these people haven't challenged you and... You're waiting for them to do their songs or something? Right? You've gone very camera shy, haven't you? She was all, she's all, she's really loud and talkative often. I don't know what's happened to her. Come here, come here, come here. Oh. Okay, so what are the good points and the bad points of this um, application, uh, Jelly Juju? The good points are, it's fun. Um, you can play your friends on Facebook and you can choose to make your scores appear or you can just choose random people, play on your phone or your tablet or on Facebook itself. So can you play this on your Android um, Galaxy S2 as well? Yes. Yes, and does it work just as well on it that? It works just as well. Okay, excellent. Right. Um, 
you, you're part of a tournament, so over the week it keeps track of how many people you've won and lost against, and you get extra power-ups at the end of the week if you've won some games. Power-ups? Mm. What are power-ups? Is that like one-ups and fire mushrooms and stuff? <laughs> no? No. What do we do? Uh, so if I have some playlists to choose from, I can choose more playlists if I've earned some money, and if I've got some power-ups, I've got options, like I can change playlists in the game and remove some of the options to make the answer easier. Oh, I see, like you just did in that previous mm. game, so that's kind of like a bonus. Yeah. And when you say money, could you actually have what's called an in-purchase app? Where if you, you look here, there's a shop, and this is how much money I've got at the minute, 297 coins. But you could buy some more with real money? I, I can buy some more with real money using my Facebook account, or I can wait to... Or you can... More. Come on, you never turn. You know, when you're playing in a game for ages to, le to level up. Level grind. Yes, that's it, you level grind. Right. Okay, so that's uh, Song Pop. Uh, I cannot give you any opinion on this game because uh, I'm not into music at all, but Julia plays it all the time. She loves it. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, a pretty good game. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon in another Nexus 7 video. Come on, do it. Do it, do it, do it. That's it. The Nexus 7, as great as it is, comes with somewhat of an Achilles heel. It doesn't like external storage devices, such as pen drives, SD cards and portable hard drives. The first problem is a physical one. There are no hardware slots for storage devices. All you have is a micro USB port. But this is where the solution begins to take shape. First, you will need a USB on the go cable. Now, these aren't common cables, so you're not likely to have one hanging around, but they are very cheap, costing around a pound or two dollars on Amazon. This OTG cable plugs into the micro USB port on the Nexus with a normal USB port on the other end of the cable. With that issue resolved, you'll need some software to run these storage devices. There are several around, but most need modified tablets, which require complex and technical changes to your tablet. There is one app though that works without any modifications and it's called Nexus Media Importer. This app will detect, stream and save pictures, video files, music and documents from pen drives and memory cards. For portable hard drives, please see the video description for more details. As you can see, when I plug in my pen drive, it automatically launches the application so that I can see my pictures. At the top of the screen, I can toggle through videos, music and documents. This view simply shows everything of that format within the storage device, but you can switch to more traditional folder views through the options in the top right hand corner. If you select a picture, it will show a picture preview in the lower half of the screen. However, if you want to watch a video file, you will need to press the stream button at the top of the screen. This will now stream the video directly from the storage device. The 7 inch form of the Nexus lends itself more to use in portrait rather than landscape but there will always be times when you want to tilt your device long ways. Another feature of the Nexus Media Importer is the ability to transfer files from your storage device to the Nexus 7. This is done using the save button, again at the top of the screen. You can view all transferred files through the Download Manager app or use a third-party file manager app such as ES File Explorer. For reference, pictures are saved to the picture folder, videos are saved to the movie folder, Music is saved to the music folder and documents are saved to the download folder. You can select multiple files, again through the options in the top right hand of the screen and there is a share option to get the files quickly onto the Nexus and then onto another location such as Google Drive. Nexus Media Importer is currently the best and safest way to plug in external storage devices without modifying your tablet and improvements are being added to this app all the time. It does cost a few dollars, but if you're traveling and don't have access to a computer, then this is a perfect way to transfer content from pen drives and memory cards. BBC iPlayer allows you to watch most television and radio programs broadcast on the BBC during the last seven days. It has become an essential part of our TV watching and radio listening habits. However, the lack of official flash support on the new Android Jelly Bean operating system has meant that iPlayer doesn't work through browsers until now. A BBC media player makes iPlayer programs work even if you don't have Flash. If you open up the application itself it's not going to do much except send you to the iPlayer website in a browser. 
Currently, my Asus Transformer Prime doesn't have flash, so watch what happens when I press on a program. Firstly, it doesn't say I need flash to play this program, and secondly, when I press play, the BBC Media Player app kicks in and plays the video. You may have noticed that this is not playing in HD, so the quality is mediocre at best. So this is the new way of using iPlayer, but there is an old method that's a little more tricky to do, but does have some nice benefits. Direct yourself to this webpage on the XDA forums, the address is included in the description, where you can download Flash and an older version of iPlayer for Android. You will need to sideload both of these apps onto your Nexus, so see the video description on how to do this. Once you have done this, you will have a dedicated iPlayer application that has a much nicer navigation system than using the iPlayer website itself. What this application is doing is using Flash rather than the new BBC Media Player app, so obviously there is no need to download it. Simply press on a program and it will load and play. Life with the Doctor was like this. Yeah, I'm trying to. So the choice is yours, use the new media player or get Flash and the older iPlayer app. My preference is the latter because my attitude is that a dedicated app is always better than a web browser because the navigation system is designed for touchscreen devices. The only problem is you won't be able to upgrade this version of iPlayer whereas a new BBC media player will be updated in the future. Also, installing BBC media player and the old iPlayer app may cause a little bit of confusion as when I did it, it just seemed to revert back to iPlayer all the time. As for using iPlayer outside of the United Kingdom, well I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that, but if anyone would like me to test this, I don't mind an all expenses paid trip to the Bahamas. The widgets that come packaged with the official Facebook and Twitter applications are rubbish. What you need are scrollable, resizable and interactive widgets, and that's exactly what Android Pro widgets do. Android Pro Widgets, or APW for short, contains loads of different widgets, but it's the Facebook and Twitter ones I want to concentrate on. As you can see, they sit on the home screen and are very quick and clear at showing you the general feeds from the two social networks. The Facebook feed has a couple of buttons at the top of a widget that allow you to cycle through feeds of your own profile, a general news feed, and an option for posting a status update. There's also a refresh and a configure button. The Twitter feed works in much the same way too, giving you feeds of people who have connected with you, a feed of all the people you follow, a feed for your direct messages, and the option to do a tweet if you want to. Another powerful aspect of the widgets is the ability to resize them to any shape you wish. This is brilliant in shaping the widgets to your preference, and it means that if you're going to try and slot them into an already busy screen, you'll be able to do this. I like to keep my feeds as two columns on a home screen by themselves. The one thing you need to do when you first download APW however, is to turn off all the widgets that you're not going to use. The reason for this is that there are around 25 widgets in total in the application, and they completely clog up your widget pages, so you end up having to scroll through pages of useless widgets. APW has an app, so go into that and go to settings to turn off widgets. APW is free, but you can buy a pro license if you want to. It comes with loads of extra widgets too, so you might find even more goodness beyond the Facebook and Twitter widgets I've shown you in this review. With the latest software update of the Android Jelly Bean operating system, Google have fixed one problem but caused two new ones in the process. Observe. Now if I rotate the home screen, it rotates with me and goes into landscape mode. Now, I don't know about you, but I've grown very accustomed to my portrait home screen, and I'd like to keep it that way. The problem is, if I lock the screen by swiping down from the top of the screen, it locks my entire tablet into portrait mode. I still want my apps to go into landscape mode. And, more frustratingly, the lock screen actually rotates. When I pick up my tablet, I'm often shuffling it around in my hands, and the last thing I want the screen to be doing at this point is actually rotating. This is where Ultimate Rotation Control comes to the rescue. 
It allows you to completely customise the way your screens rotate, from lock screen to home screen to individual apps. So, in this example, I'm going to prevent the home screen from rotating, even if my tablet is set to rotate. I do this by going to the Per Apps setting and finding the app I want to edit. In this case, it's Launcher. Then I can choose the behaviour of a rotation. And of course, the behaviour I want is Portrait. When I go back to my home screen, you can now see a small notification icon with a P that indicates the rotation is locked. And as you can see, it doesn't rotate. But if I go into an application, such as a web browser, it will rotate to landscape. Press the home button and I will go back into portrait mode. There is also a special option that assigns a behaviour to the lock screen. So again, I will set it to portrait, which means that no matter how I hold the tablet, I know what screen orientation the lock screen is, so I can easily unlock it. Nicely done. I've shown you the tip of the iceberg when it comes to ultimate rotation control. So take advantage of the free 7 day trial and customise the behaviour of your tablet screens to your heart's content. Protecting your tablet from unscrupulous types is a pretty easy thing to do with number locks, pattern locks and even face recognition technology. Protecting individual apps is a different matter however. This is where app lock comes into play. It simply enables you to add passwords to applications as you attempt to open them. First of all, to use app lock, you must set up a password so no one else can tamper with your settings. Once you're into the app, scroll down the applications list until you reach the application you want to protect and slide the lock button to lock the application. Then when you next try and use the locked app, it will ask you to input the password. Type the password in and you'll be granted normal access to the application. It's that simple and when it comes to protecting your apps, that's exactly what you want. Now the added benefit of app lock is that it protects applications with accounts that you can't log out of easily such as Gmail. So once you've locked the app, not only will you need a password to access Gmail, but you will also need a password to try and put the Gmail widget on a home screen. A nice touch. Just remember that if the widget is already on your home screen, then people will still be able to read your emails. There are a couple of options, such as a free time limit to return to an app before it locks again, and you can choose between a number and pattern lock. App lock protects your apps within seconds and keeps them secure for a lifetime. Sometimes all you want is the simplest app that does the simplest things, and Battery does exactly that. The application shows you the current battery strength and the estimated time left on the current charge. Press the advanced button to take you to more details such as temperature and voltage and press the usage button to take you to the usage screen as shown in the settings. Back on the main screen, press the notification button to instantly add a simple battery icon to the top left hand corner of the screen. And finally, there are two widgets of different sizes available that you can drag and drop onto your home screen. Battery. It's simple, really. Macro Pinch are back with another simple, efficient application for your Android device, and it's simply called Weather. Opening the app will display the current weather in your area automatically. No setup is required at all. Swipe right once and you'll be given a breakdown of the weather for the next six hours. Swipe right again for a five-day forecast of the weather and the maximum and minimum temperatures. If you swipe left from the first screen, you'll be presented with two options. The first option turns on the notification icon, which tells you the current temperature. And the second option turns the temperature figure from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And finally, if you have the Jelly Bean operating system, a nice clean weather feed will sit in your notification tray. Press it to launch the application. It's another simple app for everyday life. Perfect. Star Wars Angry Birds. Angry Birds, Star Wars. No matter which way you say it, it works. You can even say it Yoda style and it still works. Birds angry, Star Wars is. I'll assume you know what Angry Birds is, and if you don't, basically you use a touchscreen to catapult birds at baddies. So the question is, what does Star Wars add to it? Well, I think the answer to that is obvious. Lightsabers. 
Each bird has a special Star Wars ability, the first of which is the red bird that swings a lightsaber when you touch the screen to swipe through walls and barriers. This bird uses a Jedi force push in a direction you press the screen. Han Solo bird fires guns etc etc etc. You can almost predict everything that's going to happen in this mashup, but it's done with the entertaining humour and panache we've become accustomed to with Angry Bird games. There are loads of levels and each of them challenge you to complete it in as few shots as possible. This gives you more stars to unlock more levels, a classic case of skill versus reward gaming. The choice is yours to either blast through the game as quickly as possible or quickly repeat levels to get three stars. I'm impatient however and I'm more keen on progressing through the game to see how they deliver each classic Star Wars moment. They have stuck with the original trilogy too which is a very smart move so the opening levels begin on Tatooine. Hoth levels are coming soon, but you'll have to start paying money for Return of a Jedi action. There are also gravity free levels like this one where you can use C-3PO and R2-D2 birds to progress through the level. So yep, this is pretty much everything and anything you would expect from such a title and it's absolutely fantastic. Reddit is a huge, massive, colossal portal of pictures, links, conversations and chatter and this app makes and is called Reddit is fun. The application launches you onto the main page of Reddit that contains the most popular posts of the day from the many topic areas of the site. Each post is a snippet of its content and you can access more by tapping on the arrow or picture on the right hand side of the screen. Now the statistics for Reddit are mind boggling. There are over 3,500 different communities, nearly 50 million unique users and nearly 4 billion pages of content. You will never run out of stuff to look at and it's thankful you can save posts you like as demonstrated here. Another key ingredient of Reddit is the way people critique the content. You can vote posts up or down on the left hand side of the screen and if you tap on the post itself it reveals extra options such as being able to discuss it. All I can say is Reddit certainly is a hotbed of diverse and strong opinions. And of course this app allows you to quickly and easily join the conversation. The amount of information can be very overwhelming when it comes to Reddit, but this app does an excellent job of offering you different ways to manage the content. At the top of the front page you can quickly sort content by what's new, what you've saved, the top posts over a certain period of time, or the most controversial topics currently going. The Reddit button in the top left hand corner of the screen is your gateway to the many different communities. Simply scroll down a huge list or refine your search with the keyword. The speed at which this app is able to bring up results and display information is absolutely astonishing and you'll find where you want to go very quickly. Finally, if you find content you would like to post on Reddit when you are using another app, you can use the share button to quickly launch the Reddit is fun application and post what you've found. This app makes mincemeat of what can be a daunting source of information. It's fast and organises content to suit your needs. Basically, it makes Reddit fun which is exactly what it was trying to do in the first place. The Nexus 7, as great as it is, comes with somewhat of an Achilles heel. It doesn't like external storage devices such as pen drives, SD cards and portable hard drives. The first problem is a physical one. There are no hardware slots for storage devices. All you have is a micro USB port. But this is where the solution begins to take shape. First, you will need a USB on the go cable. Now, these aren't common cables, so you're not likely to have one hanging around, but they are very cheap, costing around a pound or two dollars on Amazon. This OTG cable plugs into the micro USB port on the Nexus with a normal USB port on the other end of a cable. With that issue resolved, you'll need some software to run these storage devices. There are several around, but most need modified tablets, which require complex and technical changes to your tablet. There is one app though that works without any modifications and it's called Nexus Media Importer. This app can stream or copy pictures, films, music and documents from your pen drive, card reader and some portable hard drives straight to your Nexus 7. And here is how it works. When you plug your USB device into the tablet, Nexus Media Importer will automatically kick in and take you to its file navigation system. Along the top of the screen are buttons to display different media types while the left hand pane of the main screen shows you files and folders and the right hand pane displays a thumbnail if possible. To save an item to the tablet simply press the disk icon at the top of the screen 
a notification will indicate to you that a file has been downloaded. In the top right hand corner of the screen you can tick multi-select which enables you to choose more than one item before copying it across to the tablet. For videos all you need to do is press the play button at the top of the screen and you're off and running. And if you want to listen to any music just press play. Now if you have any files that Nexus Media Importer can't play itself such as this document you are given the option to temporarily copy it over to the Nexus 7 so that one of the onboard applications can work its magic. Finally, if you wish to look at files as they appear on your storage device, use the folder button for a traditional view. A couple of final pointers, Nexus Media Importer can be used for streaming and copying content but you cannot copy content from the Nexus 7 back onto your storage device. As for portable hard drives, the Nexus 7 may not provide sufficient power to run a drive. The best approach is to buy a powered USB hub and put it between the drive and the Nexus 7. For reference, in this video I'm using a 1TB Toshiba hard drive. So, if you're running out of disk space on your Nexus 7, Nexus Media Importer has just solved all of your problems. You can't deny it, shooting the undead is a popular pastime in the video gaming world and Zombie Evil is another one of those games. Just look at it. Carnage. Explaining the basics of this game takes about 10 seconds. Choose a world, choose a difficulty, choose a level, choose a stage. Simple as that. You are entrenched at the bottom of the screen with a gun and a whole manner of different zombies will emerge from various entry points on the screen. All you need to do is touch the screen to fire in that general direction. Obviously your aim is to prevent these zombies from attacking you but they will simply keep coming and coming and coming until you kill them all. Each zombie you kill will earn you a little bit of cash which you can spend on ammo and upgrades. As you progress to later stages you will unlock new weapons such as shotguns and missile launchers but it's jolly hard switching to these weapons midway through a level. You will also get access to super weapons such as this aerial bombardment that you can use when the time meter fills up. Have some of that. With the money you earn during the game you can spend this on new weapons. Whenever you use a weapon other than your standard machine gun it costs a little bit of money so it's like spending ammo. But you can also use the money to upgrade your super weapons or your defense, rate of fire or chance of critical damage. What this is all geared towards is in application payments with real money. You can either spend ages level grinding or spend real money to get stuff more quickly. It's a popular form of gaming these days and it's up to you which way you want to do it. For me I'm happy to just play the game when I have a spare few minutes and slowly build up my strength. It's another one of those perfect touch screen games that's so simple to play but full of enjoyment. It's very challenging and you may get a bit annoyed replaying levels over and over again just to get enough cash to buy stuff but it's very addictive and like I said killing zombies is fun especially when there's this many of them. The simplest games are the best games when it comes to touchscreen devices. That has been repeated time and time again and Bike Race is another one of these simple yet utterly addictive games. Touch the right side to accelerate, touch the left side to brake, tilt right, tilt left. Here's what happens on screen. As you can see when I tilt the tablet it shifts the balance of the bike so you can change your angle of attack. Each stage is full of hills and troughs and bumps and drops and it's up to you to navigate your bike as quickly and as safely as possible through the stage. If you have ever played Trials HD on the Xbox 360 you will know exactly what I mean when I say this game is fiendishly compelling. Each stage is little more than 10 to 20 seconds in length but they get incredibly difficult and complex as you progress through the game. You will fail levels countless of times but it reloads you straight back into the action that you're constantly saying just one more go. And even when you do finish a level you have the added incentive of doing a stage again until you finish a stage quick enough to get three stars. Those stars will help you unlock later levels. The level design is absolutely brilliant with a learning curve that transforms this game from casual distraction to insanely hardcore. And it does it so perfectly you never even realise how addicted you have become. When I first downloaded this game I expected to play it for about 5 to 10 minutes. But two hours later I was still at it and worse still I was trying to complete the same stage in an attempt to get three stars for 30 minutes. 
It was 10 second chunks of race, die, race, die, race, finish, time not good enough, race again. I'm telling you now, if I ever played this game on a train or a bus, I would definitely miss my stop. In addition to loads of tracks in a single player mode, you can even challenge anyone else who plays the game, post the time on a stage and then let them see if they can beat it. Now this simply isn't an addition to the game, it's essential because only when you've won a few multiplayer games are new stages and bikes made available to you. And as usual, the size, weight and grip of an Nexus 7 makes playing bike race for hours an absolute pleasure. Download it and enjoy it, but just be warned you may need to clear your calendar for the next few weeks. The Nexus 7 comes with a camera, which you will find pointing right at you all the time. But without any applications, there's no way to use it. An unusual niggle of the Nexus 7 is that it doesn't come with a camera application out of the box. But this is easily remedied with Camera Launcher for Nexus 7. All you need to do is open the application and it will take you straight to the camera. Oh look, there I am, in my dressing gown again. The application itself comes with a few simple features, such as adjusting the resolution of the picture and changing the exposure levels. A large button at the bottom of the screen takes the actual picture. You can also switch to video mode if you wish, using the option in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. When you've finished taking pictures and recording videos, simply swipe from right to left on the screen to bring up the gallery, where you can view your pictures and videos. This is a simple application that fills a hole left by Google and Asus when they first designed the Nexus 7. And of course, this application is completely free. That always gets a thumbs up. Logo Quiz is a simple game that doesn't rely on tablet trickery or touchscreen skills. It takes the basic premise of guess what the picture is. The idea has probably been around for a hundred years, but playing it on a tablet makes it quick and easy. Once you have chosen a difficulty level, you will be presented with anywhere from 30 to 80 company brand logos. Each one has a vital part of its content removed, whether it be words, colours or shapes. All you need to do is work out what the brand is and type in the correct answer. And that's as complicated as it gets. And while this may seem like a very basic premise, give it 5 or 10 minutes and you'll be hooked as you smash through most of the pictures without too many problems. The real intrigue begins when you get to logos that are familiar, but you just can't quite remember what they are. When this happens, you can use a limited number of hints that will describe the company behind the logo. Hopefully that should give you enough information to trigger off the right answer in your head. Once you've got the correct answer, you can also learn a little bit more about the company by pressing the Read More button at the top of the screen. This displays the corresponding wiki page, which is a very nice and informative touch to the game. Logo Quiz is an enormous game. At last count, there were 1,007 logos to guess, so you could be at this for some time. And if you do succeed, Bubble Quiz, the developers behind this game, have loads more Logo Quiz games too, that centre around different topics such as cars, flags, football teams and even music bands. And, as if I need to tell you this, they are all absolutely free. GPS Test provides a simple yet thorough diagnostic tool for your mobile Android device. Depending on your device, within 5-10 to 10 seconds, GPS test will pinpoint your position and display very clear and digestible packets of information to you. This is the main screen, and as you will see, when more satellites are picked up, the more accurate and comprehensive the data becomes. The four boxes at the bottom of the screen give you much more detailed information. For example, the first screen provides you with a compass view of the satellites in view. The second screen provides latitude and longitude coordinates as well as your location and the current position of the sun. The third screen is handy for when you're on the move and displays speed, heading and altitude. As you can see my desk isn't particularly fast these days. And the final screen lists the local time as well as sunrise and sunset times. As you can see there is a lot of information to glean from GPS tests but it's very usable too. It works just as well in portrait mode or landscape mode and the options give you the opportunity to change the colour scheme of the application so you can use it in a whole manner of different environments. Here are just a selection of the different colour schemes. The options don't end there either. You can pretty much tinker with any option that displays data so that it suits your needs. So for navigators, enthusiasts or those who simply want a cool GPS app Look no further than GPS test. File browser applications give you direct access to your files, which is great, but you can get to them even quicker if you have them on your home screen, and that's exactly what File Browser Widget does. 
This application provides you with two different widgets that you can put on your home screens by the usual method of going to the widgets tray, long pressing on the widget and then dropping it onto a home screen. Once you've done that, if you then pick it up again with a long press and then drop it in the same place, you can then resize it to have an entire file browser occupying a home screen. And from that point on, you have a full interactive file browser. The widget begins at the top level of your folder structure, but it's easy to drill down into folders by pressing on them. You can also access files such as books, photos, music and media. Pressing on them will simply launch the application associated to the file type. The second widget is more of a list and it includes longer rows so you can get a full view of the folder and file names and it works by scrolling up and down the list. And when you go into a folder you can always use a button in the top right corner of the widget to back out of a folder. This feature is included in both flavours of a widget. Finally, a small option icon is included next to each folder so you can perform tasks such as renaming it, copying it, deleting it and so on. So in summary, File Browser Widget is a fully functional file manager that's ideal for setting quick access on your home screen to folders you use for work, rest and play. As is often the case, the best games are the classic ones, rebooted for touchscreen devices. Find the Difference is another one of those games, a mainstay of many a pub quiz machine, only now you get to frustrate yourself within the comfort of your own home. As you can see, the rules are very simple. You are given two identical pictures, save for five differences, and it's up to you to find them. Usually, it's a different colour or a missing shape or something that's been reversed like a bag on someone's shoulder. All you need to do is touch that part of the screen where there is a difference. Now, this does sound easy, but with the detail, depth and colour of the pictures being so complex, you can be there for ages staring at the screen saying to yourself, I just can't find this last difference. If it does come to this, you can use the reveal hint in the top right hand corner, but do be careful as these will eventually run out. Phew! That's the first one done. On to the next oh well, blooming it, this one's impossible. But it can be made easier if you film 10 minutes of coverage and then edit the clips down so it looks like I'm racing through the picture. Easy peasy. Ugh, I'm not so sure about this one. I should also mention that you can have timed games so that the pressure is really on to find those differences. And don't think for a minute that you can start pressing the screen willy nilly just to guess where the answers are because every time you get it wrong you'll get a time penalty. Find the difference is classic entertaining fun stuff and I just can't find this last one. Ah! However if you do succeed with the main game then head over to Google Play for more picture packs all absolutely free. Ah, I've just found it! In principle, Guess a Movie is pretty much what you might imagine it to be. However, this game differentiates itself from the rest of the crowd through exceptional style and artistry. Starting with the best movies of 2012, you must work out from the picture what the film is. So in this instance, the answer is quite obviously Ted. With that answered correctly, you are taken straight back to the pictures where you can choose another and put in your next answer. This one, of course, is obviously Lincoln. What makes this guest game so exceptional is the phenomenal artwork. The colours, themes and shapes connect the iconic motifs of the films in question and you'll often catch yourself smiling in appreciation of the designs. If you do get stuck on any pictures, you have three levels of hints. The first gives a brief synopsis of the film, while the second gives you a Wheel of Fortune style fill in the blanks. But if you're still stuck after that, you can concede defeat and reveal the answer. But that does cost you a lot of hint points, which you earn throughout the game. As you progress through the game, the pictures become both more wonderful and challenging at the same time. So if I was you, I would download this application with haste and marvel in its beauty. Guessing games lend themselves perfectly to touchscreen devices, and there are hundreds around. Guess the brand, guess the movie, guess the flag. This particular incarnation is Guess a Celebrity, famous faces from around the world. You start the game with movie celebrities, whether they be famous actors or directors, and all you need to do is type in their name. 
Now, the two important aspects of Guess a Celeb are the pictures of a celebrity's are artistic impressions. Secondly, this artwork is absolutely sensational. As you can see, each piece of artwork draws directly from memorable characters that the celebrity has played in movies or iconic images of them that immediately connect you with the celebrity. And it is these images that set this game apart from the rest of the crowd. This style, combined with the swift and simple game mechanics, ensure that you can get addicted to this game very quickly. And if you do happen to get stuck on a particular celebrity, there are three types of hints to help you. The first gives you a brief biography of the person. The second option reveals part of their name in a Wheel of Fortune type manner. And finally, if you're still completely stumped, you can sacrifice a large chunk of your hints to get the answer revealed. And as you get more celebrities right, you get more hints to play with. Now, once you're finished with film celebrities, you can move on to other categories such as musicians, TV personalities, sports people, world figures and more. Basically, the more you put into this game, the more you get out of it. And with style like this, you want to get as much as you can out of this fantastic game. It's another simple premise, brought to touchscreen devices and executed perfectly. Four Pictures, One Word is a simple association game where you are shown four pictures that are all related to the same thing. That thing is a word you need to guess and hidden in the selection of letters at the bottom of the screen is a word you need to type in to get the answer correct. So, in this first example we can see that each person is holding a sword. Spell that out with the letters you have available and there is your first correct answer. The game is as simple as that and with a single press of a button you are thrown straight into the next challenge. Here is another one. We can see a wave, a shower, bubbles and a plant. And the thing they all have in common is water. Like so many touchscreen games, the secret behind four picks, one word, is its simplicity, combined with the speed at which it takes you from one picture to the next. There is no waiting around and you can stop at any time and carry on later. For children, this is both an excellent diversion and a simple educational tool, while for adults, the sheer number of pictures and slowly increasing difficulty of the picture associations will keep you occupied for hours. As you answer pictures correctly, you will amass currency, and you can use this to buy hints from the two buttons to the right of the words. The first hint will reveal a letter, while a second hint removes a selection of letters to narrow down the possibilities. But of course, I don't need any tips because I know the answer to this one. All you need is a spare 10 seconds in a day to play 4 picks 1 word, but just be careful that that doesn't turn into 10 straight hours, because, simply put, this is one addictive game. We all love free stuff, and this free video is about to tell you how to get your daily dose of free applications. App of the Day is an app in itself that offers you a previously paid application for free for 24 hours. The apps on offer are nice and varied, ranging from games to PDF viewers to this one which is a running and exercise app, which was previously $7, so that's a huge saving. All you need to do is press on the free button. This will take you directly to Google Play so you can get the application and you can be sure that it's a safe and secure download. The bottom half of the screen will show you the apps that have previously been on offer for free. Now, what makes App of the Day unique in this free apps market is that it doesn't annoy you in the slightest. It will send you a single notification every day to tell you what app is on offer and if you don't like that, you can even turn it off so you won't be bombarded with any rubbish from this application. App of the Day is simple, offers great apps and it preaches to the gospel that the best things in life are free. We all know that if you swipe down from the top of your screen, you can see all your current notifications. But now you can get to them without even unlocking your device with a cool little application called Notification Lock Screen Widget. It basically takes advantage of the fact that you can put widgets on your lock screen. So when you press the power button, there are your notifications. You can scroll up and down the list to see all the notifications you have. And if you press on a specific notification and then unlock your device, it will launch straight into the application that relates to the notification. Also included are a whole host of options to tailor the widget to your preferences, including the ability to change the size of the notifications and colour of the text. 
And what makes this application even better is that if you don't want particular notifications to appear, either because they're annoying or because they might contain sensitive information, you can configure the widget to not display notifications from certain applications. In short, you can pretty much do whatever you want to get the notifications to appear how you want them to in your lock screen widget. And they work just like notifications in that you can remove them when you're finished. Just note that this does not affect the appearance of your notifications at the top of the screen and you need Jellybean 4.2 to independently run this widget. If you haven't heard of Doodle Jump before, then where on earth have you been? Ah, of course, you've been waiting for the free version of it. And here it is. Doodle Jump puts modern technology into a simple game for addictive results. You control the doodler who is constantly hopping up and down at the bottom of the screen. Your task is to guide this creature up the maze of obstacles, enemies and death-defying jumps by simply tilting your device from side to side. You can tap on the screen to shoot at enemies, but other than that there are no controls to speak of, so it's pretty much a game of spirit level. The screen scrolls upwards with your progress, so platforms quickly disappear off the bottom of the screen. You will get help along the way though with springs, helicopter hats and rockets that shoot you up the screen massively to boost your score. But here's a warning, those platforms do have a tendency to break, explode and disappear with alarming regularity, so there's always an element of pressure, and with the difficulty gradually rising and rising, I'm sorry to say that it's only a matter of time before you die, because, like so many games of yesteryear, this one has no end, the game will always beat you, but that will not stop you from coming back and trying just one more time in an attempt to beat your previous high score. There are various different themes to play Doodle Jump, such as a football pitch, the jungle, a Christmas world, and this spooky Halloween style one, which quite frankly makes the game almost impossible. And just in case you were wondering, Doodle Jump works just as well on smartphones. Just remember one thing though, your next game could last 30 seconds or 30 minutes. Thankfully though, you can pause it. A simple title for a simple game that simply occupies endless hours of your day. Lasers is a puzzle game in its purest form. All you have to do is direct a single laser from its starting point to its ending point. The tools you have available to do this are blocks that will reflect the laser at right angles. So to solve this puzzle, place a block here to reflect the laser to the end point. You see, I told you it was simple. Now, of course, the first few levels are a taster of what's to come, and they ease you in, gradually gaining your confidence and making you think you're a master. But things will get tougher and tougher, but never frustratingly so. Lasers has a calming influence on your soul, and sometimes all you need to do is play around with the blocks and eventually something will happen. As if by chance you will solve the puzzle. Lasers does what all great puzzle games do. It teases you without ever actually irritating you. And that, of course, leads to that most famous of gaming phrases. Just one more go. As you progress through the game, new blocks will be introduced, such as this transparent block that splits the laser into two beams and black blocks that completely halt the laser. You'll soon find yourself having to position more and more blocks and guiding the laser through more points to complete the stage. It's friendly. Fiendish, and let's think of another F word, fantastic, yes, it's utterly fantastic. And if you do eventually get stuck on a level, you do have a limited number of hints you can use that will give you a clue as to where to put one of the blocks. It's a nice gesture, but with all these levels to work through, you will have to use them sparingly. Lasers is as stress-free a puzzle game as you're ever likely to find, and it's accessible to everyone of all ages. If only I could solve this puzzle. There we are. Welcome to another variant of the popular picture word games that are sweeping touchscreen devices. This format has been around in television shows, newspaper puzzle pages and board games for decades, but their lasting legacy is their simplicity, mixed with this new digital format. What's the saying is exactly what it suggests. A picture will occupy the top portion of the screen and it's your job to work out the popular English phrase using the letters available in the lower portion of the screen. So in this first example we have a picture of an I which seems to be under the word stand. If you combine those two words together, what do you have? 
I understand. Simply type that word in for your answer. Now, obviously, when you're not using a standard keyboard, it can be quite easy to make typing errors. But rather than clearing the whole answer, you can press on individual letters in the phrase to remove them and then add the correct letters. There is, however, a clear option too on the right-hand side of the screen. As with all these types of picture games, Say What You See lures you in with fairly simple phrases such as whiteboard, blackjack, a walk in the park and others such as you are seeing right now. There's a satisfying sensation of progress and you can easily rattle off loads within a short five minute burst. And because there's one puzzle at a time, you can instantly stop and pick up where you left off later. It is the ideal distraction. As you have seen, with every correct answer, you earn a little bit of in-game currency that can be used on a puzzle if you are stuck. So if you press a question mark button, it will offer you a range of choices such as revealing letters, taking away letters from those available, or revealing the answer if you are completely stuck. That will cost you quite a lot however, so only use it as a last resort. And if you are completely stuck and completely broke, then take to the social media highways and post your puzzle on Facebook or Twitter. Surely one of your friends will know the answer. So go on, say what you see. You might have to think outside the box sometimes, but it will be worth it when that little switch in your head clicks and you get the answer. Let me show you what I consider to be just about the perfect news application for tablets at this current moment in time. This application comes in a few guises, but we'll focus on the tech version of the application since this is a tech based YouTube channel. This is what you might call the front page of Appy Geek, a range of topics that can be moved around the screen and resized. If you press on one, it will launch that topic into a new page that includes headlines and small snippets from news stories from a whole range of sources that link back to that original topic. Now, in this first example, I have chosen a topic, Top Stories. So we have news about Facebook, smartphones, tablets, games, the Android operating system, basically anything that's deemed top news. It looks like a newspaper, and if we press on one of these headlines, that will then launch the full article. Now this article is quite a short one, but if I choose a longer article, all we have to do to read it is simply scroll down the page. The text is clear, the font is a good size, you can press on the pictures in the top left hand corner, the article is very readable. The two options at the bottom of the screen are bookmark articles, and the left option slices the screen in half and gives you a quick snapshot of all those top stories you were looking at on the page previously, so you don't have to back out of the article you're looking at. Press in the top left hand corner to return you to the main top stories page. Now, Appy Geek aggregates its news by keywords, so instead of choosing top stories, this time we will choose Android articles. And as you can see on this page, everything is dedicated to applications, running Android on certain smartphones, and all the articles you would want to know about the green robot. And those keyword linkages are used all throughout Appy Geek. If we look at an article in more detail, we can see that some words are highlighted in bold. This is because these are key words and they are clickable. So if I click on the Samsung Galaxy S4 link, it will bring up a new splash page. And this time it has all the articles you would ever want about the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now, being the new owner of a Galaxy S4, I want to add this topic to my front page. So if I press on the star at the top of the screen and then return to the main Appy Geek front page, as you will see, a new topic has been added so I have quick access to Galaxy S4 articles. You can also add new topics using this add button on the Appy Geek front page. So if I press on it, I now have the option to search for a brand new topic. Appy Geek will have a lot of suggestions to give you to begin with from all sorts of topics that it thinks might be relevant to you. But I want to search for my own topic, so all I need to use is a magnifying glass at the top of the screen and I'm free to choose any topic I want to see if there are any articles available. And of course, there is only one topic I would want to search for and that is Nexus 7. As you can see, it has found the topic and there are 47 articles available. Press on the add button in the top right hand corner of the box, return to the Appy Geek front page and there we are, Nexus 7 articles ready to read.
One other and very cool way to look at new keyword searches is to press on a link in the top right hand corner which kind of looks like a heartbeat and you'll get what looks like a globe of words. Again, these are all keyword searches that are found throughout many different articles. So if I scroll around and see smartphone, I can press on that and again I will be thrown instantly to all the topics that have the keyword smartphone in. It's a brilliant way to navigate around the news system. What's even better is that you can add widgets to your home screen. So in this example, I have added the Android Topics widget, which shows me a brief rundown of the news headlines, press on one of the articles, and it immediately launches up the application, ready to read the article. Now, AppyGeek is part of a much wider news application network that covers all sorts of topics. News Republic is for general topics such as politics, education, health. Sports Republic obviously looks at all the top sporting stories. AppyGamers is there for your video gaming fix. And then we have more niche areas. So simply download the application, put in the keyword searches, and you're off and running no matter what sort of news you need to find out about. So let's ask that question again. Is AppyGeek the perfect news application? Well, almost. There are just two problems that I have with the application. First of all, news articles do strip out links, which can be a bit of a problem. And the highest font, which is huge, isn't quite big enough. It's still perfectly acceptable, but I would like it to be a little bit bigger. Nevertheless, though, AppyGeek is one of the best applications I have ever used on any touchscreen device. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon in another application review. Here's the thing about Android home screen wallpapers. They're a bit silly. Usually pictures work either in portrait or landscape, but rarely both. Yet Android tries to make the best of a bad job using the same picture. Look at this, it just looks horrible. What I want is to use different pictures depending on my orientation of an Nexus 7. For example, I have these Android plushie dolls all lined up in nice horizontal and vertical lines. Wouldn't it be nice if it could switch from one picture to the other? Well, now you can with simple image wallpaper, and here is how to set it up. Once you've downloaded the application, long press on a home screen and choose wallpapers. Now, technically speaking, simple image is a live wallpaper, so you'll find it in the live wallpaper section. Once you've selected it, choose settings and configure the options to the following. Make sure the fill screen option is ticked so the whole image is used. Then tick rotate to fit. This ensures that portrait and landscape pictures align themselves correctly. Next, select your first image, which is the landscape image. You can choose from a variety of picture options, whether it be Facebook, the gallery and so on. Then tick the portrait different option and select your second image, which is, of course, your portrait image. Once you've selected your pictures, press on the back button to return to the previous screen where your picture should now be displayed and then choose set wallpaper. That sets up your live simple image wallpaper. So now I have a vertical image of my dolls turn it landscape and I have a horizontal picture of my dolls. Perfect. So there you have it folks, simple image wallpaper is a simple application, a simple solution to a simple problem. Tablets, just like PCs, fill up with all sorts of rubbish, but Clean Master is a very simple way of removing all that rubbish and here is how it works. The top portion of the screen displays the current capacity of your tablet while the bottom portion of the screen provides you with a few maintenance tools to help you free up more space. The first option I'm running right now is sniffing through all my applications looking for junk such as cache files and other rubbish that quite frankly is just clogging up the system. As you can see this process discovered over 130 megabytes of random data that can be removed. It's also intelligent enough to know when not to remove files such as the system cache. If you've never run this process before, you'll be surprised just how much rubbish is on your tablet. When I first ran this task, it discovered nearly a gigabyte of junk files. That's nearly 10% of my whole Nexus 7 storage capacity. The residual files check can locate old files from applications that have been uninstalled and will remind you about big files such as movies that are on your tablet. It doesn't try to delete them, it just lets you know where you could save some storage space. The privacy task will list all the applications that contain sensitive data, such as web browsing history and passwords. It will guide you through the process of cleaning these too, if you need to. 
And of course, no Android maintenance application would be complete without a task killing operation that can free up RAM instantly. You can even turn this process into a funky little widget that looks like this. You can also set a maintenance schedule so that you are warned if the cache size goes over a certain limit, such as 300 meg, or perform a task killing operation every time you lock the screen. CleanMaster has freed up lots of space on my tablet since I started using it, the performance has improved, and I've not noticed any system instability, so this application is well worth investigating. Sometimes you just need a single widget, one widget to rule them all, and when it comes to lock screen widgets, this is the only one you will ever need. It displays all the information you need because you can choose what it displays, and it provides direct access to the application that displays that information. The widget in question is Dash Clock, and it acts as the main hub to host mini extension widgets that you can pick and choose as you build up the widget. Here is how it works. The first thing you need to do is remove the existing clock widget. So press the power button to display the lock screen and then long press on the clock widget to pick it up and drag it to the top of the screen to remove it. You will now be left with a plus icon, so press it and then choose a dash clock. This will automatically take you to the settings page of Dash Clock where you will find some widgets. You can add more by pressing add another extension. You can also look at the settings of Dash Clock by pressing on the advanced button at the top of the screen and then choosing the advanced option. You can also change the appearance of the clock and set the daydream settings. But in short summary, once you've chosen Dash Clock as your new lock screen widget, all you need to do is lock the screen, press the power button, and there will be Dash Clock with your new extensions. At the moment, I have two widgets displaying, my Gmail and Weather, but I can edit this by pressing the Settings button which is next to the clock on Dash Clock. Now I'm going to remove one of my current widgets by swiping it away and then adding another extension. And this is where things get really interesting because you're not limited to the widgets that come with Dash Clock. Go into the Google Play Market Store and you will find plenty more Dash Clock mini extensions to add, such as a battery indicator, Facebook notifications, even cricket scores if you're into that sort of thing. All you need to do is download the extension and when you go back to Dash Clock, the extension will appear and you can add it just like any other. And many of the extensions even have settings so you can tailor it to your preferences. So as an example, I now have three extensions which I can scroll through to check my battery, Facebook notifications and the Ashes cricket score. Dash Clock is a fantastic application with near limitless possibilities, so check it out. This is the simplest app in the world that provides an alternative to pressing your physical power button to lock the screen. It's an on-screen widget that does exactly the same job, and obviously it's called Turn Off Screen. The nice thing about this widget is that it requires no permissions to run, but it does require a tiny bit of setup, so here's what you have to do. When you first download the app, run the application to get to this screen. Then press the Test Turn Off button. This brings up a screen that confirms you want to activate this function. Press Activate and that will turn off the screen. That is pretty much it. All you need to do now is add the Turn Off Screen widget and every time you press it, that will lock your tablet. And although I've demonstrated this on a tablet, it works just as well on a mobile phone, such as a Galaxy S4. Just one final piece of advice, if you want to remove turn off screen from your device, make sure you run the application and use the uninstall option in the program. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Christmas Live Wallpaper Free is simply the best free live wallpaper for Christmas. And remember, to change your home screen wallpaper, Long press on a blank part of the screen until you see these options appear. Choose Live Wallpapers, select this Christmas one, and then select Set Wallpaper. It's as simple as that. And the wallpaper itself is as beautiful, rich, and festive as this. It's a striking blend of particles and a single lighting source that illuminates your home screen. The scene shifts from this static view of a Christmas tree, with stars raining down, to this countdown timer leading up to Christmas Day.
And then the scene shifts back to this wonderful panning shot of the Christmas tree. The best live wallpapers are the ones that make your screen look wonderful, but at the same time they don't distract too much from your home screen icons and widgets. And since there are only three principal colours in this wallpaper, it does just that. And tablet performance is completely unhindered by this wallpaper. No jerky home screen scrolling in sight, not even on older devices. The free version of this wallpaper is limited only to this Christmas scene, although you can change a few small things like the detail. The paid version includes different themes such as New Year's Day, snowflakes, sky lanterns and more. So do check that one out if you like this one. And if you've got more than one Android device, make sure you add the wallpaper to all of them because, well, it just looks cool. I've been using this wallpaper for one month every year for the last three years and I can't find a Yuletide alternative that even comes close to this one. Merry Christmas, everyone. Fast Notepad is the simplest Android notepad in the world. Nothing extra, no ads, and it loads instantly. Launching the application takes you to the folder screen, where you can continue on with an existing notepad or press the plus symbol or add button to start a new notepad. And that's your screen, a keyboard and a white space. Type what you want. You don't underline it, change the colour of the letters, adjust the font or insert pictures. This is a notepad. The one quirky thing you can do is chuck in a few emoticons. The files that are created in Fast Notepad are text or .txt files, but you have the option to encrypt these files if you wish through the settings button on the top right hand corner. Any notepad files you do encrypt will appear in green text on the notepad selection page and will have a green background when you're editing the notepad file itself. The folder page gives you a few options to create folders and manage the notepad files you currently have, such as deleting them, copying them or moving them to a different location. So it's a completely self-contained application. All the options in Fast Notepad can be accessed either through the settings button in the top right hand corner of the screen or long pressing on a notepad file itself. Fast Notepad is just like your notepad program on a PC. It's there to quickly make notes and dump raw text for safekeeping, and its simplicity is what makes it a valuable productivity application to any tablet user. Must not sing that song. The final countdown is indeed a song, but it's also a great application for your Android device. As the app suggests, it counts down time, but the style in which it does this and the simple yet comprehensive options available to you are what sets it apart from anything else. From the main screen, you can add a new countdown and do all of the following. You can name the countdown, set a minute, hour, date, month and year of the countdown. You can also set a countdown to recur if you wish and also set a countdown reminder that happens before the countdown up to two days in advance of it. So if somebody's birthday is coming up, you can set a reminder to occur just before it to make sure you buy a present for the actual day. You can also choose the alarm noise so you can more or less do anything you want. But of course the best bit of any countdown timer is choosing the skin. There are plenty of default ones available to choose from as you can see here and they all look great. You can even create your own skin by adjusting the colour palette of a digit, background and border. And then you can take those countdowns outside of the application and use them as widgets on the home screen. There are two sizes available, a 2x1 and 4x1 widget and the skin retains the properties you chose when you were creating it. So within the application, Final Countdown will display the countdowns in chronological order with the soonest first. As for the widgets, well you can do this. Ooh, I've got a few seconds left. <clears throat> the final... Ah, that's the spirit. Bubble Level is another one of those no-nonsense applications that simply does the job as advertised. It's used for measuring whether a surface is flat and level or the angle of inclination. You can also tilt your device from landscape to portrait and the screen will adjust to compensate. And if you tilt your phone skywards, the display will change to this top-down plan version of a bubble level. 
It's another great application for those moments when you just need to quickly check something and you're not near your toolbox. In fact, bubble level is better than a traditional spirit level because it gives you numerical data. Additional features include calibration, sound effects when the bubble is level, the ability to install the application to an SD card and no adverts. And for that reason, the developer receives a big thumbs up.